Dave Palumbo with another RX Muscle Redcon 1 rant. Today's topic, insulin sensitivity. You know, I've been talking a lot about this because I think a lot of people are very confused about insulin sensitivity versus not having enough insulin. I think it's important to address and explain what insulin does. Even though a lot of you guys know, I think we have to break this down to very, the very basics of what goes on in the body. You eat carbohydrates, okay? The carbohydrates get digested into glucose units, they get absorbed into the bloodstream. The pancreas, specifically the beta cells of the pancreas, sense high blood glucose. They release insulin, okay? Insulin then takes the blood glucose and it pushes it into the cells. Muscle cells, brain cells, liver cells, where it's used as energy and where it can be stored as glycogen for later use. When those cells get filled up, almost like a gas tank in a car, the excess glucose gets stored in the fat cells as fat. That's basically what happens, okay? It's a little more complicated than that, but I'm kind of breaking it down. Now, you could also produce glucose in the bloodstream from the liver or the kidneys. They can produce glucose from amino acids. That process is known as gluconeogenesis, which occurs all the time in the body, okay? So your, your body's constantly raising blood sugar whether you eat carbohydrates or not. It doesn't matter if you eat protein or not. Your body takes whatever protein it needs and will always be raising blood sugar. Basically, it titers the blood sugar. So the blood sugar drops too much. If, the, if you're not eating anything, your body will bring its, the blood sugar up a little bit by converting some amino acids into glucose. You can't stop this process from happening. Um, in some people, okay, specifically people who are overweight, you know, borderline type 2 diabetics, what happens is that the insulin that they're producing doesn't work as well. And why doesn't it work as well? Well, insulin requires insulin receptors. And that's the receptors that are on the cells of muscle cells, brain cells, whatever cell, liver cells. They're, they're little openings that the insulin molecule attaches itself and then can do its thing, which is transport glucose into the cell. Um, in some populations of people, because they eat poorly, they're overweight, they have genetic predisposition, they just don't have a lot of these insulin receptors. So their body's producing enough insulin, but it's not, it can't do its job because there's not enough receptors are, are there. Um, and usually what happens in those people is that the body doesn't realize there's not enough receptors, so the body over-secretes insulin. And that causes them to get fat and they have poor blood sugar control because you know more insulin won't help the problem, you need more receptors. A lot of these people get put on drugs like glucophage, metformin, and what these drugs do is they increase, increase the amount of insulin receptors on the, the surface of the cells, and that will help with, with you know, the absorption of sugar, okay? For bodybuilders, glucophage, you know, metformin, not great drugs, because it also reduces IGF-1 output, which we don't really you know, want in a bodybuilder. But most bodybuilders, remember, eat a very clean diet, Hopefully a lot of them take their essential fatty acid supplements like omegalyze and, and, and you know, take in good monounsaturated fats. So their insulin sensitivity should be good. And most bodybuilders don't eat a ton of sugar and junk food. So what happens in most bodybuilders, okay, who have poor blood sugar control, is that they're not producing enough insulin, okay? Now why would that be? Well, let's face it, the general population doesn't eat 1,000 grams of carbs a day, okay? And on top of that, take growth hormone, which makes it harder for your insulin to do its job because growth hormone antagonizes insulin. Okay, in other words, it doesn't let insulin get to its receptor. It blocks out insulin. In doing so, the body, once again, is over-secreting insulin to try to make up for this. The problem is that it's putting a huge burden on the pancreas. Like I said, because bodybuilders eat six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day, Every time you eat, your body's cranking on insulin. Way more than most people eat, you know, three times a day, if that, with a couple snacks maybe. But bodybuilders have so much food that they're consuming, and then on top of that, you put growth hormone, they can't produce enough insulin. And what happens eventually is that, not their insulin sensitivity it gets screwed up, they just don't produce enough insulin. And so what happens is blood sugars start to run a little high. And they notice this first in the morning, when they do fasting blood sugars. You go to Walmart, I always say, go buy a $9 blood sugar monitor. You, you, the first thing in the morning, you test your blood sugar. If it's over 90, you're, you're running high blood sugars. It means your body's not producing enough insulin, okay? Once again, we need to, the reason I spent so much time explaining what insulin sensitivity was, because I wanted you to explain to you that bodybuilders normally don't have insulin sensitivity problems. What they have is producing enough insulin. So, and a lot of people, you know, who are on growth hormone, I suggest that they use 
a, a faster acting, not super fast acting, a faster acting insulin known as humulin R, which has two peaks. It releases initially half of its uh, injection load and then the other half is released two to two hours later around. And what this does is it takes the burden off the pancreas of having to produce so much insulin per meal. So if you took two humul and R shots per day, that's going to cover four of your meals that you're eating. And what that enables you to do is that, once again, the pancreas is not being overworked as much. So usually that solves the problem for people who kind of have really gotten into bodybuilding early on, who are using GH and, and, and they're eating a lot of food and that works. But guys who've been doing this for 15, 20, 25 years, eating eight times a day, taking lots of growth hormone. Okay, these people probably don't need just a little boost. They probably have burnt, their pancreas' beta cell production, or I should say beta cell output, is low, okay? Meaning that they're slowly but surely burning out their, their pancreas. And, and, and if you see a lot of guys in their late 30s, or early 40s, are becoming diabetics in bodybuilders. They're talking about it. They're out there talking about it. You know, I know Abbas Katami has come on the show, uh, Ronnie Raquel was had a, a insulin uh, required insulin. So what's happening is guys who've been around for a long time have, are burning out their pancreas. Now there's a way to solve that too by taking a long-acting insulin, which would basically basically tell your pancreas it doesn't have to produce insulin at night or anything like that when your blood sugars are going up from gluconeogenesis, and it enables the beta cells to rest. And I talked about myself doing this. I was running slightly high blood sugars, you know, but I'm a neurotic. Okay, so I did an experiment for four months where I took Lantus insulin, which is a long-acting insulin. I took it in the morning and I took it at night before bed. And I did this for four months, which basically told my pancreas, you know, rest. You don't need to produce. We got insulin right here. The only time my body probably was releasing insulin was when I was eating, you know, carb meals specifically. We probably Because there's two types of release of, of insulin. The immediate release following a, a carbohydrate meal. And then there's the slow trickle effect that's constantly going on in the body to take care of you know the what's happening from gluconeogenesis in the body those sugars that are just going up indirectly and what i did was take this long acting insulin not a short acting and what i noticed was my blood sugars were really good when i was on them and then when i stopped it after four months my blood sugars were perfect okay without any insulin what that told me was that in those four months my pancreas regenerated itself okay now, that's great for longevity purposes, but for short-term usage of, of, for bodybuilders, taking a drug like glucophage, metformin, taking these insulin-sensitizing supplements, they're good, but they're not going to solve your problem because your problem is not insulin sensitivity. It's getting the sugar into the blood, okay? And it's a sheer volume thing. You need to give your body help. Okay, especially if you're going to take large amounts of GH, you know, like some of I don't recommend anyone takes over four IUs, but guys take six, eight, 10, 12 IUs of GH a day. That makes you really hard for your pancreas to produce enough insulin. And then on top of that, you're eating, you know, six, seven, eight hundred grams of carbs a day. So the combination of that is deadly to your pancreas. So you don't want to become a diabetic later in life because if you burn out all your pancreatic cells, your beta cells, they won't regenerate. Okay, so we want to catch it early. That's why it's important for you to check your blood sugars, your fasting blood sugars, your two hours post meal blood sugars. What I recommend is usually you pick your two biggest meals and, and wait two hours after you eat um, and then test your blood sugars. If it's under 130, you're good. If it's over 130, that means you're not controlling blood sugars well uh, as well. Uh, and once again, why is it bad to not control blood sugars? Well, we, first of all, we don't want to lose pancreatic function, but also the higher your blood sugars run, okay, the more side effects you get accumulation of sugar in the, uh, in the endings of your extremities, uh, the brain, the eyes, you, you know, there's a million, the kidney tubules, you don't want to destroy your body. We want to live a long time, but we want to live a healthy long time. That's what I always tell people. So remember guys, make the distinction between insulin sensitivity and not having enough insulin. Know that bodybuilders fit into the latter category rather than the former. Uh, your Aunt Mary, who's, who's got running high blood sugars, probably is the, is the former insulin sensitivity issue. That means we want to get her on some good essential fatty acid supplements like omegalyze, a good monounsaturated fat like macadamia nut oil, and we want to put her on a fiber supplement like Fiberlyze, which is going to keep you know, the output of liver glucose, gluconeogenesis, to a minimum. And we could do that as bodybuilders as well, which we probably most of us do already. So once again, it's a complex subject. I hope you guys uh, got some light shed upon it. I wanted to do a rant on it because a lot of people lately have been asking me questions and are confused about it. If you have any questions, you could always contact me. 
Uh, if you're liking these videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit like below. I'm Dave Palumbo with another Redcon 1 RX Muscle rant.